a 10 millimeter socket and ratchet, we're gonna go ahead and loosen and remove our battery terminals. Using a 13 millimeter socket, we're gonna go ahead and remove the bolts securing this side bracket on the side. We're gonna use a pick to release our little lock here. You just press down on this little tab right here and disconnect that. Go ahead and set your harness bracket aside here like that. I'm gonna loosen our oil cap, remove this. Go ahead and pop off our engine cover here. Reinstall our oil fill cap. And set the cover aside. On the passenger side lower corner of the radiator is your drain plug. You wanna have your drain bucket underneath. And we're going to turn our drain plug counterclockwise. A little tight and sometimes can be a little tough to get into. You can probably use a pair of pliers, get in there to assist you with turning this. Now once we're done draining, go ahead and reach back up and we're gonna tighten up that drain plug by turning it clockwise and get that snug. Use some rust penetrant on your hardware here. These four bolts we're going to remove. Using a 15 millimeter wrench and our ratchet. Let's go ahead and loosen these bolts. our bolts. I'm going to reinstall our nuts onto those bolts. 
and go ahead and remove those mounts. Go around your electric fan assembly and remove any of the harnesses and clips attached to it. Be a couple down below. You can use your trim tool or a similar pry tool to go ahead and pop these connectors off. On the back of each motor, there's an electrical connector. Pull out on the tab and push the connector off. Do the same for both. On each side of the upper portion of the cooling fan or radiator, there's gonna be a bracket. There's one here, one on the other side. They're held in with a 10 millimeter bolt. And to use our socket and remove these. Get remove that bolt, work that bracket out, and repeat for the other side. On the passenger side of the radiator fan, we have a 10 millimeter bolt here, and just underneath the upper radiator hose. Go ahead and remove this. There's one in the center. Let's go ahead and loosen and remove this one as well. And on the driver's side, we have one right here by the airbox. Once that's loose, you should be able to reach on in there and take that out by hand.
Good, and you can use your pliers or your removal tool for your upper radiator hose clamp here. Grab your radiator fan unit. Go ahead and pull that up and out. Now I want to go ahead and release the tension on the lower radiator hose clamp here. Now before we pop that, we are going to put a catch can underneath just to catch any residual coolant. Let's go ahead and work that lower radiator hose off. When your automatic transmission cooler lines, our particular one has a collar on here. We're going to use a small pick. I'm just going to work this collar back and off. And pop that off. Underneath, there is a retainer clip. I'm going to go ahead and get my pick underneath here. And we're going to try and release this clip here. Once you get that clip out, looks like that. And now the transmission line should pop right out. And just wiggle that, it's held in with a rubber O-ring in there. Let's pop that out. We're gonna go ahead and do the same for the bottom. out of the bottom one. Let's go ahead and grab that line and get that out. On our radiator right here, there's a stud for the AC that goes through this little plastic spacer. And it's supposed to go into a nut on the back side onto our radiator here. Ours is broken. So we're gonna, instead of removing this whole stud through here, securing this, we just need to get our plastic spacer off here. Using a 13 millimeter socket, remove the bolt securing this brace. set that bar aside. Next, let's go ahead on removing this air box unit itself.
gonna gently pull up on this tray right here. Now that we have the AC condenser separated from our radiator, let's go ahead and lift our radiator up. Now we're going to want to go ahead and use a small pick and want to remove these little retainer tabs here and swap them over to our new radiator. I'm just going to line that up and push it into place and repeat for the other side. You know, bottom side of your radiator here, there's gonna be a rubber grommet. There should be two of them. Our old radiator came out with this here. It's gonna be a two piece. And we're just gonna swap it on to our new radiator. radiator mount from the vehicle. I'm going to go ahead and install that onto our radiator now. Go ahead and lower down the driver's side of that radiator. Get it into place. Make sure your wires for your fan and stuff are out of the way. Line up the rubber grommets into the lower support. Now what we want to do is we want to lift up on the AC condenser and drop it into the retaining locks on the back side. There's little tabs on the back. And there's two tabs on each side. Once we get that side in, go ahead and repeat for the other side over here. I'm gonna work on cleaning up these hoses here, our lines. Just I wanna make sure that we have a nice clean connector here to slip into our AC condenser. And do this for both of our fittings. Our new radiator. Our radiator comes with the retaining clips already in there. You line that up and you just push that in. Go ahead and do the same for the top. It's locked into place. Put on our little 
clip collars. And grab your lower radiator hose. Just gonna just give that a quick wipe down on the outside. We're going to install a new hose clamp here. Go ahead and reposition our air box base here. This has the ECU set up in there. Set down in place. And all the locking tabs will line up and pop in. Just snug that down. Install the two forward mounted bracket bolts. There are two short ones that go here and the one larger of the three goes up top. Let's go ahead and tighten those down. fan down into place. As the fan lowers down, it'll pop into little resting tabs on the radiator on both the driver and passenger side. I'm going to take our bracket right here, goes over the center, goes over both the condenser and the radiator. Go ahead and get that bolt started. Let's go ahead and install our bolts on each side of the radiator. Just get that snugged up by hand, repeat for the other side. All right, now that 
we have all three of those bolts in, let's go ahead and snug them down. Just want to snug that down. brackets. Just press those down into place, repeat for the driver side. Bring that back. Let's go ahead and get our bolt started. started there. Let's go ahead and snug these down. Go ahead and install your wiring harness. There's going to be several clips running around and below the fan unit itself. Connect your fan up here. Line that up and snap that into place. I'm going to go ahead and install our upper radiator hose. Get install our bracket here. Let's go ahead and tighten those down. All right, let's go ahead and tighten these down. And line up our dog bone here. nut 
install there. Let's grab that motor and rock it back over, pop that bolt in and get that nut started. Let's go ahead and tighten these bolts down. Check these terminals, make sure they're nice and tight. And then place our boot back on the top here. Let's go ahead and connect our connector here. Line that up, press that on. You'll feel it click into place. Then you want to press on our little gray lock tab. Lock that down. We're going to come on over to our radiator cap. We're going to open this up. And spin this off. We want to get ready to fill this. This is a GM motor here. We want to go ahead and use the recommended coolant for the system, which would be our Dex Cool. And we're going to spin on our adapter here and put our funnel on. I'm going to go ahead and slowly fill this up until the spout has coolant at it. So keep on filling this up. Use your appropriate mix, 50-50, and the coolant that is required for your model application. While filling this up, you want to also go ahead and periodically look underneath for any leaks. particular application here with our reservoir we can go ahead and fill this up let the coolant sit here if you don't have the style here what you're going to do is fill up the uh, fill up to the top of the neck here and you're going to put your cap on loosely you don't want to secure it as the engine heats up it's going to build up pressure and you do not want to remove this cap when there's hot pressure built up there what we're going to do next is start the vehicle we're going to let it run going to bring it up to about 2,500 RPMs for about 40 seconds and then let it come back to idle. And we're going to do this three times. You're going to watch for the coolant to purge or bubble and let any air pockets come out. Then we're going to come back around and go ahead and add coolant as necessary. Now once we get this vehicle up to operating temperature, the thermostat should open up and absorb the rest of this coolant here. Once we're all set and this thermostat has opened up and our coolant is gone, we can go ahead and remove our, uh, our funnel here and put our cap back on. Now from inside the vehicle, you want to go ahead and set the temperature to hot. You can set it on whichever you want, but I choose the face and the floor, and we're going to turn the heat on max. 
at this point here, after cycling the throttle back and forth a few times, bring the RPMs up, you wanna go ahead and check for heat. Make sure that you have good, solid heat coming out of these vents. If it's still blowing cold, chances are the thermostat isn't open yet and you're not up to operating temperature. You wanna leave this circulating for a little while. What we're gonna do is plug up our funnel. And we'll go ahead and release this here. Gonna catch any residual coolant coming up. I want to go ahead and remove our fill cap here. I'm just gonna put some towels around here so we don't dribble any coolant onto our belt. Once that's off, go ahead and put our cap on and go ahead and tighten that down. Go ahead and pop the cap. You can use a nice clean funnel. Go ahead and fill the reservoir or expansion tank to the fill line. It is clearly marked on the side of the tank using the appropriate coolant. Once that's filled up to the appropriate line, we'll go ahead and pop our cap on. So now that we have the reservoir filled, I want to go ahead and start up the vehicle, let it run again, maybe drive it around the block, get it warmed up nice. At that point there, you want to go ahead and open the hood and check the expansion tank. See if the fluid is below the, the full line. If it is low, simply repeat the process by opening up this cap, fill the reservoir to the appropriate line, and then pop the cap back on. Pop off our oil fill here. 